So I am sitting here with Sheila Jasnoff at Harvard University and um, we have some questions from the, uh, S the new STS Turkey network. So I thought we might begin with a few words directly from you about yourself. Thank you, Sam. Um, I'm uh, delighted to be with you. I'm Sheila Jasanoff, fourth time a professor of science and technology studies at, at Harvard at the Kennedy School of Government. Uh, and it's an enormous honor to speak to you on this occasion. It's a delight to me to see the STS networks uh, thriving and functioning. And, and I was in Turkey discussing this very subject in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And it's a great pleasure to be back in 2017, even if it's only virtually. Great. Uh, so the, the network, as it's getting up and going, uh, has a couple of questions for you about uh, uh, the development of the network itself that uh, they would love to hear your thoughts on. The first question um, is, what are your hopes for uh, this STS Turkey network? How will it contribute to academia and society and why have a network? That's a wonderful question to speak about. What I bring to this question is my years of establishing um, and running an STS department at Cornell University, which is one of the universities in the Ivy League in the US, and then coming to Harvard and here at the Kennedy School establishing the program on science, technology, and society. So in all, I bring several decades of experience building STS in a variety of ways. First of all, the very fact that I've devoted my life to doing this is uh, evidence of the fact that I consider this to be extremely important. Science and technology, as I needn't remind people in this room, are two of the most important institutions and forces in modern life. We have not, in universities, devoted adequate time to studying how science and technology take the shapes they do, how they interact with the rest of society, and how we should condition our expectations of science and technology, how we can learn to use the forces of science and technology in ethical and responsible ways. So I think the first thing that STS can contribute to universities is setting aside a dedicated space where we can think about two of the most significant forces in modern life and where we can learn to be responsible designers and users and distributors of scientific knowledge and technological know-how. As to the implications for society, again, there's hardly anything that one can turn to in society today, any area of policy, any area of consumerism, any area of the economy, where science and technology do not play a central role. Whether we're talking about the labor market, where people think that artificial intelligence is going to come in and make a huge difference, or we're talking about agricultural production, where climate change may have devastating effects on food supplies, or, of course, the issue of health, where we're wanting to uh, supply our populations with long and fruitful lives and healthy lives. In any of these and other areas, we're always dependent on science and technology. And a systematic study of science and technology through a network of dedicated scholars is one very important way to begin tackling these problems with more information and also more wisdom. Mm. So, building on the, the end of that the comment, uh, having this systematic study through a network of scholars, so what is the, can you say a bit more about the value of the network in, in affecting the types of, in, in understanding what changes normatively we might want to be seeking and in actually bringing, you know, affecting those changes in, in practice? Yeah, that's a great question. Why bother with a network? Why isn't it adequate to have various departments and an odd scholar here mm. or there. Well, first of all, there is uh, strength in numbers. Um, science, technology, and society is not yet an established field, even in the United States, and I gather also not in Turkey. And having a network allows people to recognize who their counterparts are, and all kinds of exciting discoveries can come from the fact that people 
meet each other. We're very used to the idea that in the natural sciences and engineering, mm. uh, occasional conversations at professional society meetings will have enormous impact down the line. So just now, in connection with what I'm writing myself, I was reading back at the prehistory of biotechnology, mm. and Herbert Boyer from UC San Francisco accidentally met Stan Cohen from Stanford, mm. and the two of them put their research agendas together, and lo and behold, you got genetic engineering and an entire frontier opened up. <clears throat> For STS, we don't have those spaces as yet. And I'm hopeful that STS Turkey will be one of those spaces where people will be able to exchange ideas, form mm -hmm. new partnerships, bring their insights together into new forms. Are there are there um, some lessons that you've learned from building in other spaces about um, creating these spaces as generative for new ideas? My single biggest um, piece of advice would be be open be generous, be charitable. We mm -hmm. sometimes speak in the metaphor of the tent. Is this going to be a broad tent mm -hmm. or a narrow one? Uh, and I think that everything in my experience says be broad. One little example from my own experience at Harvard, mm -hmm. we have a weekly colloquium series. We meet 22 times an academic year with speakers and that colloquium has become a real fixture at Harvard. Many people come and its attendance has grown. And that's partly because we're very open. We don't say uh, this is only for STS scholars and then try to define STS narrowly. Mm -hmm. We invite scientists, we invite engineers, we invite philosophers, we invite historians, we invite sociologists. As long as they have something interesting to say about science and technology, they're welcome. And I would hope that, in, especially in the early days of building a network, mm. um, the objective would not be to exclude, but to include. Sure. And so rather than create a, a sense, I mean, would that be involved in creating a sense of what STS Turkey is as a network, to be careful to do that in a way that maintains that epistemic charitability, the inclusiveness as part of it? Yes, absolutely. I think yeah. that STS Turkey, if it's worthy of its name will be an experimental space to start with mm -hmm. and people will have to see what makes them comfortable, what are some of the animating ideas that uh, people find the most rewarding. Yeah. One of the things that I've done in the past is build a thing called the Science and Democracy Network and I got to know some members of this audience through the Science and Democracy Network mm -hmm. and one reason that network thrives is that we are united by a set of common interests, but our interests have shifted over time. So today a lot of people are talking about governance and responsibility. That is a relatively new theme. We used to talk about citizenship and we still do. Mm -hmm. So there are some recurrent ones as well. But the network mm -hmm. to some extent helps define what this community mm -hmm. is all about. Great. One final question. Um, for uh, young scholars who are trying to make it, through STS in the sense of, of using STS either in academia or outside? What kinds of opportunities would you want them to be looking for? Well, I want to leave you with a hopeful message that mm -hmm. really the sky's the limit. Yeah. Science and technology are everywhere and therefore systematic learning about science and technology should be able to get you through a lot of doors. Um, the graduate students that I've trained, now just the PhD students, mm -hmm. many of them have gone into academia, but by no means all. People have found jobs in uh, government departments, mm -hmm. in uh, private industry, in startup firms, in science communication and the media. People find that the STS training uh, opens the door to asking smart questions and giving answers of an unexpected sort and those skills can actually take you to a lot of places mm. and your imagination is going to prove the only barrier. Well, Professor Sheila Jasnoff, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to answer these questions. Thank you, Sam. It's been a pleasure.